So we're talking today about improve RO, pre-treatment and performance and cost with activated filter media. Already Iqbal mentioned our media before, so I'm now quickly drop into what is our filter media. First of all, we are a company established in Scotland and uh, now taking over kind of by Switzerland. Uh, owners are Swiss now. We have two factories, one is in Switzerland and one is in Scotland. And we have, of course, uh, many distributors worldwide from the United States uh, down to China, including in the Middle East, working with uh, Dutko Tenant. Um, so these are our two factories, just two pictures uh, for a quick view to get you a little bit of impression about the size. Uh, and actually within our factory, it looks a little bit like, a, like in a mining industry where you do crushing and seeding. That's exactly what we are doing with the recycled glass we are taking for producing our activated filter media. We are producing around uh, 50 to 60,000 tons of our filter media and supply that worldwide. So. Um, what are we doing there? So we are using a, a recycled glass uh, from bottled glass. Uh, so we are kind of cleaning this up to kind of crushing and sieving it. And then we make a special uh, three-step thermal and uh, as a chemical and thermal treatment process, which modifies the surface of our activated glass meter, which is kind of different what may other uh, glass meter suppliers are doing on the market. We are using uh, solar panels on our roof and we use our own rainwater, which we recycle to wash uh, the glass in the first um, process. So this is a quite intensive um, washing and cleaning and disinfection process up to it goes into a manufacturing of, of crushing and sieving and then a special uh, surface uh, modification process where we give our uh, media special uh, functionalities, which uh, you can actually see in one of our videos we have on YouTube. You are free to contact me to ask me to share more on these details. I'm not going into manufacturing details at the moment. So we have seen before that uh, bacteria try to survive always on any surface in the water, um, on the membranes and, and upstreams before the membranes on cartridge filter, um, yield filtration membranes, or in our case, on, on filter media. So what they typically do, they actually extra have the um, they detach on surfaces and they generate these so-called extracellular polymeric substances, which are actually polysaccharides proteins in the, in the main composition. And they are very difficult to penetrate. So actually, even with high chlorine levels, you may just remove or kill some of the bacteria, but you have uh, high difficulties to actually penetrate into these ones. That's actually where Iqbal mentioned before, this is the unseen fouling, <laughs> because uh, there's these layers become very very small and they may not be identified at early stage. So difficult to remove, not only the membranes, also on the surface of sand or other conventional filter media. So these bacteria may grow already in the filter media. That's actually one of the biggest growth potential upstream of the RO membranes where actually today, if you use filter media or filtration, media filtration, where a bacteria may grow. So as you can see here, one cubic meter of sand has a surface area of, of, surface area of 3000 square meter. So what happens then in these conventional filter media is you have bacteria, they foul then the media, then they start to grow, they're building clumps, then these actually leads to channeling. These channeling uh, can happen from time to time. They may occur and they may just disappear, but they happen very frequently if you have sand filters or sand and anthracite filters. So as a consequence of this, you have actually downstreams, you could have actually more bacteria downstreams, you need to do more chlorination, shock chlorination, trying to overcome or to control your biofouling in the, in the system. Of course, this makes your system no, uh, no uh, longer reliable. And that's actually one of the drawbacks of the media filtration, even if sand filters are still most widely used today, even if in new desalination plants or without desalination plants, also in pretreatment before other technologies or processes, media filtration is very often used. But with the drawbacks of having this biological growth problem, leading to an inconsistent or not reliable filtration. So how do we uh, overcome that with our activated filter media? So what we do is we, uh, in our three-step uh, chemical and thermal process, where we actually fuse the functionality onto the, mem on onto the um, surface of the, of the glass, uh, it's not just a chemical coating, it's actually a modification, a, a mechanical modification of the surface where we bring the metals of, of colored glass. So we are only taking the green and the brown glass. We are taking the white glass in a sophisticated separation process, taking that out. 
because we only want to have the green and brown glass because they contain metals, heavy metals, chromium, iron mainly, and then also other metals. We bring them to the surface, we increase the surface area. So together with the oxygen in the water, we generate short living free hydroxy radicals on the surface area. By doing so, we then uh, generate a catalytic reaction, which then protects the surface of our activated filter media to allow bacteria to grow. So with this one, we have a perfect filtration, but we never have a biological growth and there is no increase in biological growth. The consequences are immediately recognized and I come back to them later on. So this prevents from biofouling on the AFM and of course also on any downstream systems and also the chlorination demand may dramatically reduce. So these short living uh, hydroxy radicals, they are also only on the surface area. Don't, uh, don't think about they are leaving the filter and then they may be available to, to disinfect the water. They are not disinfecting the water, they just protect the surface of the activated filter media from biological growth. So here are some pictures. Uh, we have new sand after a couple of days, of course, you have bacterial colonization. If you take new AFM, even after five years, there is no biofouling on our filter media. So what does it mean? For example, this is a picture of a plant uh, in Spain where we used it in tertiary treatment. You can see here there is a, let's say the frequency of pressure increase and, and then backwash the pressure drops down. So the DP is going up and down, but you can see the, the levels are quite different on the height, on the pressure increase itself, and also on the distance. Sometimes even when you get channeling, then you have actually no pressure increase. That means your water is actually not filtered anymore. So this is a typical kind of sand filtration problem. Uh, whereas on the same system, once we replace this one with AFM, we have a very consistent um, pressure increase, backwash, and, and a very consistent operation of the plant. Looks very similar like an ultrafiltration membrane system. So um, one of our meters, the newest one, which, is, which we have developed is actually hydrophobic on the surface, which even further increases the particulate removal, but also you can remove microplastics and oils or hydrocarbons, which sometimes can be a critical issue in RO pre treatment. We are removing this in our process. Here you can see on top, we have the AFM standard, which is a negative charged AFM. On the bottom, there is the AFM NG, next generation, which is hydrophobic, where you can see the water is is uh, repelling from the surface of our media, which sounds of course a little bit strange but why you're doing this because actually you want to have the water passing through the media. But actually there is not a big problem with this because we, even with the hydrophobicity, the, water, the surface can be easily wetted. But this on the other side provides for the, from the hydrophobicity point of view for the removal of oil and microplastics. So we also doing the process, we are increasing the surface area itself. What does it mean? Here, as an example, you can see in a, in, a, in a vertical filter, five cubic meter or 177 cubic feet of media, the surface area with AFM is 320,000 square meter or 3.5 million square feet, square foot, whereas with the sand, you have uh, about 10 times less, uh, even more, uh, less surface area. So with this higher surface area, we also have much better mechanical filtration properties to remove particles. So what does it, what does it mean as a consequence? You can see here on that graph, if you take the 95% the removal performance as a good, good means of removing particles, as you can see at 20 microns, uh, usually sand filters start to drop in performance, whereas our filter meter, we can go down even to, uh, with our grade zero, the finest grade, to 98 removal performance of a mic one micron particles, which is very important, especially in desalination pretreatment. These data have been established by independent a lab. We are testing all of our media in at IFTS, which is a reputed institute for, for hydraulic and uh, filtration performance testing. So what does it mean in uh, compare that to where we stay between media filtration and ultrafiltration before reverse osmosis? Sound usually takes it down to 20 micron if you say the good performance. With our AFM, and that's a logarithmical curve here, a uh, <clears throat> representation of, of, of a scale, <clears throat> we go down to one micron, where we already are in the microfiltration uh, removal performance range. And then if you would add even some coagulant or flocculant, it can go down very efficiently removing particles down to 1.1 micrometers. So we can say with AFM, we are kind of closing the gap which exists today between conventional media filtration and ultra and microfiltration. 
So um, then talk about costs. So what does it mean in, in improving CapEx and OPEX in RO diesel plants? So first of all, we have seen from presenters before us, we have a typical problems in our membrane operations or biofouling, scaling, organic and biofouling combinations very often happening as well. Or you have maybe some metals, typical iron fouling, iron polymer fouling on the membrane surface. So this leads usually to increased operating pressure, poor permeate quality, frequent CIPs, increased membrane replacements, and of course, then loss of membrane warranty in some cases. Uh, if you would use AFM instead of sand or other conventional filter media, that means because our filter is bioresistant, there is no biofouling, there is no incubation of the system with biogrowth, means here we have a biological approach, means that with AFM you have a consistent performance infiltration without any biofouling generation, with or without chlorination. Even with chlorination, you may even increase some biofouling issues, especially if you have more biofouling growth in filter media, which is not the case with AFM. Same particular in colloidal fouling, we remove particles down to one micron, where usually conventional filter media like a sand go down only to 20 micron particle performance removal. So that means we have a much better particle removal, which also helps to improve uh, organic or inorganic fouling on the membranes, or even improve cartridge filter performance or lifetime. Of course, with organic materials, we can use any coagulant and, and, and flocculant, which improves the filtration performance. Even we reduce them, or we even not, don't need them because we don't need coagulation because we already filtered down to one micron. So there is not, uh, uh, coagulation may not even be required, maybe otherwise, if you want to remove it from some humic acids with polyminium chloride um, precipitation. So what does it mean in, in media filtration? We have sand media filtration. You have seen here, that's a typical process of, of RO, uh, in an RO system, you use chlorination either continuously, usually today you do that in, uh, intermittently with shock chlorination. Then you have the backwash of the filter media, you have the air scourers and blowers, which we in AFN, we don't need them anymore. We can operate our filter without any air scouring and air blowers requirements. Uh, that is also, of course, the cartridge filter uh, is kind of a big question always. They, they foul more frequently. So you need to exchange, and then you have the sodium bisulfite dosing to um, neutralize the free chlorine. So if you use an AFM media filtration, uh, considering shock chlorination, we don't need any coagulant flocculant dosing as mentioned before. We dramatically improve the lifetime of the cartridge filter and we don't need any air scarring. So there is no air scarring required because why do you need air scarring? In sand filter is usually because you need to scrub off the biofilm or the organics which are attached to the surface of the media which is not the case with AFM. So we just with a normal backwash, we can wash out easily all the collected uh, particles during filtration. If you have then an optimized system, we actually would not even recommend to use chlorination because we believe that chlorination is only required mainly in the reason of, of, uh, of a media filtration has a biogrowth, which we don't have with our AFM filter. So in, a, in an optimized system, we don't, don't need any chemical dosing. We don't need any air scouring no sodium bisulfite dosing is required. That means we have a very improved system considering all of the cost reduction in, on top of uh, all of these uh, benefits AFM may provide. If you compare that to ultrafiltration uh, uh, versus media filtration, there is no disinfection of cleaning chemicals required, no CEBs. We believe that's a much more robust process. Okay, you can discuss it. You have seen before from Iqbal under variable, variable or high TSS, a load rate or NTU, you have always a very consistent uh, turbidity or uh, consistent SDI. That's actually we provided by AFM as well. We have a longer lifetime. We guarantee at least 10 years. Our systems, they run already since 20 years. There is no limitation on coagulant and flocculants use. And then we believe there is a lower capex. This may be discussed, depends on the size of supply and, and process. That may be equal, or we believe that can be actually quite lower because we can run at even higher filtration velocities than conventional sand. So here, a summary of the costs. So we need from the capex saving less filter tanks and less filter media because we can run at higher velocities. No biofilter, that means no filter media clocking, reduced of cartridge filter. So we have OPEX saving of cartridge filter changes, and we also have reduced energy consumption from CIPs of the RO system. Um, or a higher actual RO plant availability also is kind of an OPEX saving. Reduce backwash time and velocity. As I mentioned to you, to you before, no backwash is required. This reduces also the amount of water required for backwash. 
So we have a water recovery, which is bigger than 95%. So very similar to UF membranes, there is no air purge air scrubbing required. That means no capex for air blowers, energy savings, because there is no air scrubbing required. And then part, part of the removal performance, we, uh, we have one micron. That means we don't need any, any chemical dosing. Usually we can directly filter the small part, smallest particle with our AFM. So 20, 20 year service life. So we said before 10 years, we guarantee for our filter media. So that's actually my presentation. I hope uh, I was still within uh, the time. Thank you, Jochen. Uh, we have a question from uh, Tom Homan-Free. So how do you remove oils and the hydrocarbons on a hydrophobic surface? Would you not have a lot of slippage of these components on a surface like this? No, actually, we, I mean, of course, we are talking about different questions here. So if we talk about RO pre treatment, we may have 0 0.5, 1 ppm of hydrocarbons. Maybe some of them is higher, but usually it's small amounts. These are easily removed by the hydro hydrophobic surface, which is very large, as you have seen before. So we can really remove them quite efficiently. And they are also removed by the backwash. Of course, we promote a very high backwash velocity. We don't like small, low velocities to be have an efficient backwash to remove the particles and hydrocarbons from the surface, we usually recommend a backwash velocity of 40 to 40 and 50 meters per hour. So it needs to be really a good backwash, a good, so fast and short is very important. This is something we pray always to our customers. Please consider a high backwash velocity. You have a good bed expansion and you really remove the particles, including hydrocarbons, very efficient from the surface of the AFM. Can UF be bypassed totally? So can this replace UF completely? Uh, of course, yes. It, I mean, as I mentioned to you before, it can replace UF. Um, it, it, it can replace UF from the process point of view. Uh, it's, not a direct, it's not a direct comparison of saying I can have any TSS load and then with UF, I have a guaranteed, uh, um, let's say, turbidity or SDI. Uh, actually not even SDI may be even guaranteed, but let's say particle amount removal may be always same. So you have a very consistent end you. We also have the same with AFM. Uh, it's just a different way of filtration methods. It's difficult okay. to answer that question, but yes, you can replace UF with uh, AFM. Yeah, and I think we're seeing more and more uh, shift from UF to other technologies. We had some failures, let's say in Algeria, one of the largest plants and other places across the Gulf region. I cannot speak about uh, other places in the world, but we're seeing also a shift from UF to other alternative technologies. So it's good to know that uh, yeah, AFM yeah. can be one of them. Thank you, Jochen, excellent presentation.